I'd like to uh, clarify a little bit on uh, representative particles. Essentially, we've got four categories that we have to worry about. We've got elements. We've got the Honkelbrifts. That would be diatomic elements. We've got molecular compounds. and ionic compounds. A couple of, an example of each of these or an example of these as I go through an element, anything listed on the periodic table, that would be stuff like uh, helium, uh, magnesium, uh, gold, uh, anything that's on listed on the periodic table except for the Honkelbrifts, so except for hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, fluorine. Identifier, looking for one capital letter. One capital letter. Representative particle would be the atom. So if I had, say, a block of magnesium, super duper microscope, I'd be able to see individual atoms in the sample. The Honkelbrifts, on the other hand, there are only the seven of them, hydrogen, oxygen. So they are the examples. It'd be stuff like H2. O2, N2, Br2, don't really need to list examples because the, the name Honkelbrief is the list of examples. Uh, in a fire, it's one of these seven elements. So basically look at the list H O N C L B R I F representative particle is the molecule what these guys do is they tie themselves together in pairs so this would be say nitrogen or hydrogen, pairs, molecules. Remember, more than one atom connected to another atom, or more than one atom uh, chemically combined, bonded, however you want to put that, is a molecule. Molecular compounds would be stuff like carbon monoxide, Oh, what else we got? You know, CH4, that would be methane. Um, trying to think, ammonia, NH3. Uh, basically anything, the identifier, any compound, more than one capital letter, that has a nonmetal first. The name of the types of compounds tells you what kind of representative particle. Molecule is in the first part of it, so the representative particle is going to be a molecule. So it would be something like a carbon and an oxygen tied together, or a carbon 
and four hydrogens. It's a little larger. Tied together. Ionic compounds would be stuff like magnesium chloride, uh, copper nitrate. The trickiest one would be something with ammonium, ammonium ion in it, something like ammonium sulfate because that's going to look a little bit like a molecular compound because ammonia is a not, excuse me, nitrogen is a non-metal. But you got to remember ammonium is still an ion. So the identifier here is a metal first. And we'll put in a little disclaimer here. Except ammonium ion. So you got to watch out for that. Like I said in class, the ionic compound is a formula unit. The representative particle of a ionic compound is a formula unit. The reason it's a formula unit, I'll draw this over here, is because this is basically one gigantic block of ions stuck together. I used sodium chloride in class as an example. So I've got a sodium with a chloride next to it, with a sodium next to it, with a chloride next to it, and so on. And you've got chlorides below this, and you've got sodiums below this. Again, if I could peel back, I've got a sodium behind this, and I've got a sodium behind this, and behind this I would have a chloride and a chloride. So they're all next to each other. The formula unit is this little part here. Basically, we're looking at the ratio of how it's put together, and that would be NaCl. Essentially, if I took a look at the whole block, it would be a one-to-one -one ratio of sodiums to chloride ions. Sodium ions to chloride ions. What we've got is one mole of anything, you can put anything in our blank, any material, is going to be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and it's going to be followed by either atoms or molecules or formula units of that material depending on what that material is. Element would give atoms Honkelbrifts or diatomic elements would give molecules molecular compounds would also give molecules, and then ionic compounds would give formula units.